So, ladies and gentlemen, we have been teasing it. We have been talking about him, and we are finally excited because we got him right here on the show, man. Out of Western Michigan, fifth year linebacker, number 41, Robert Spillane. First off, bro, appreciate you taking time, man, to jump on the show with us, man. How's everything been with you, man? Hey, thank you, Arthur. I, I appreciate that. Nah. First things first, I just want to say uh, our continued prayers go out to DeMar Hamlin and his family Mm -hmm. and the Bills organization. And, you know, that's still weighing heavy on my heart. And just to hear that he is communicating back and looking on the up and up. So our prayers continue to go out to him. No, absolutely. And I'm glad you actually uh, spoke on that, man. Um, Just from a team's perspective and then even for you personally, how have you guys been processing this and what has been the messaging, uh, so to speak, within the organization as you guys still have to prepare for Sunday? At this point, we can just send our prayers. And as a player of the NFL, I feel like that's one of my NFL brothers. I don't have a personal relationship with him, but many of the guys on the team do have really tight bonds with him. Absolutely. And just being one of my NFL brothers, uh, my heart goes out to him and his family. And I was just proud at how the NFL came together, you know, the, the captains of the team decided not to play the game and just the support and love that's gone out to him is all deserved. And I'm just proud to be part of the NFL at this point. Now, you're absolutely right, man. Absolutely right. And like you said, man, just continue thoughts and prayers for him, for everybody, you know, that's impacted by this situation, man. And even you guys also, man, because I know mentally and emotionally, that's not easy for you guys, you know, with just the closeness of it and like you said that nfl brotherhood man so like i said all of you guys man we definitely praying for y'all and thinking about y'all man Thank you. all right first question i got for you uh what has it been like with brian flores in the linebacker building what have you learned most from him how has he made you a better linebacker working with coach flow has really been an honor and a privilege uh him being an nfl coach or NFL head coach, uh, he has so much knowledge of the game and uh, a very clear and um, precise way to communicate it. So throughout this year, we've been able to bounce ideas off each other and really come up with how we want to get stuff done. And that's one thing that I really respect and love about Coach Flo is his ability to uh, be willing to work with a player and discuss further on concepts and schemes and he's not afraid to ever have those conversations now respect that right there man and like you said it is a difference man when you have one of those guys who have been a head coach you know coming in and giving you those type of intimate talks on linebacker specifics and stuff like that man so no no i like that a lot man and uh you know i was kind of trying to be chill about you and everything but you are balling out this year i see your numbers you know you putting together this this career year on, on yourself so i just need to know man what what do you attribute all the success that you've been having this year to man you know you, you're playing a way more um in terms of that linebacker spot versus you know the special teams role so just talk about what has been the big difference for you this season versus, you know, your other years? Yeah, I think it's a collection of things. And one of those things is my continual want to, like, get better at the game. Mm. I, I never feel like I've been a guy that's arrived. So I've always been scrapping and fighting. And that work is mostly put in during these off seasons when mm. nobody's watching and you decide to, put in that extra work because you know it's going to pay off later in the year. And I've never taken playing for the NFL for granted. So being in that locker room is a, is a blessing and an honor. And I, mm-hmm. I want to continue to be able to put myself in one of those seats. Mm. So when my number is called upon, I want to go out there and make plays. Nah, and be respect. a good team. Respect. And what's been the biggest difference for you preparation wise then um, now in your role where you, are not just preparing for special teams. You're preparing for inside linebacker stuff. So just talk about what's the difference in that dynamic for you in those two roles. Uh, well, I've, I've been an inside linebacker for three years. You know, I've been a starter. I've looked at myself as a starter mm-hmm. since the moment Devin went down three years ago. Um, I proved to myself that I belong in this league and – I earned my stripes. Um, I feel like nothing's really been given to me, but I've gone out there and earned it every day. No, absolutely. And, uh, yeah. That's what it comes down to. And I, I don't really care about what the outside world, but 
I do feel that respect and earned the love from my teammates and coaches. So I'm thankful for them. No, nah, without a doubt, man, without a doubt. And yeah, we definitely big supporters over here as well, man. And, um, you know, this question right here kind of goes just to the overall mindset of the squad, man. But um, just talk about how have you guys been able to just continually overcome all the different distractions and adversity that has popped up this season? Whether we're talking the quarterback situation, the wins and losses, the passing of Franco Harris, obviously uh, the DeMar Hamlin situation. Just you guys seem so resilient this season. Could you just talk about that a little bit in sense of like how that's been or what if there is something that, you know, maybe isn't out there publicly that you guys have been doing to just stay connected through all this stuff? Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, I think we're all professionals and we're when we sign that piece of paper, we know that we're going to have to give up things in our lives maybe and to focus on the game. So at the end of the day, guys are always willing to come in to work because they know that's what it takes to stay in the NFL, to make plays. So I think uh, it really can kind of bring teams together. And I've seen our team come together and rally behind Kenny and our defense really step it up. And I'm just proud to be a part of this team. And I hope we can go out there and, not be a part of the wrong side of history when it comes to Tom. Like, I don't want to be that first. <laughs> so, so this is, this is a big go. deal. Then. And, uh, <laughs> so that's been talked about. I know don't not openly that. in team meetings, but you between the players, be. nobody wants to be a don't part of that history. It. Don't be that team. Oh, don't be that team. <laughs> We're glad you brought that up because we did just have a guest on yesterday that was wondering if this could be, how would you call it? Um, a trap game coming yeah, up here. Yeah. But from you saying that, I feel like the motivation's got to be at like 110%, right? Yeah, I, I don't like to say 110% because motivation's always on go. Mm. And uh, I, I think that applying 110% would be saying that you're lacking in other weeks. But mm. I, I like to keep that same forward body lean. There coming to meetings is. ready. Coming to practice is. ready. <laughs> Let's go. Um you know, I've seen that in our team over these last few weeks, and, you know, it, it feels good. It feels good leaving Baltimore and being able to take that plane ride home in peace with your teammates rather than heads down. So uh, there's a lot on the line this week, uh, possible playoff contention. Like I said, Tomlin's history, which is our history intertwined, so we don't want to be on the wrong side of that And for – our families at the end of the day that's why we play this game to mm -hmm. to be able to support the ones we love and for that so i know nobody wants to take a break this week we're all on the gas pedal going forward that's great to hear i love that love that going back to like the bye week then what what do you think was there a change like because obviously we're two and six going into the bye now we're six and two um, like what, what do you credit that to? Like what happened in that week? Was there anything you think crazy or like, like an too, outlier like, thing that happened or is it just, you no, guys are still I feel working? like I've honestly been too focused on each individual week to go back and look at the season as a whole. I try to save that for after the season because during the season, you got so much other stuff that's going through your mind, like our adjustments on the week, who are playing the personnel matchups, everything. So I don't have time to address big picture ideas like that, but I'm sure after the season, I'll be able to give you a better answer on that. Hey, hey hit him with the singularly focused, baby. Hey, that's that singularly focused. Yes, Lord. Let, and let it's go. not just something I'm saying. <laughs> no, it's, it's, like it's the how truth. I no, I believe it. That like, facts is the truth. Yes. <laughs> you get on with your week. You play your game on Sunday. You learn from your mistakes on Monday and you move on. Yeah. I mean, that's like how it is in the NFL. So that 24 hour rule. You baby. don't have too much Yo. time to sit back and analyze stuff like that. But I'm now, sure Tom will have a good answer for you. <laughs> now you mentioned your family, and we talked about your grandpa. I think the first time we had you on. But I wanted to dig a little deeper. Like when he played for the Steelers back in 1954, did he pass down any stories of what that was like? playing for the Steelers during that era? Because we just had the Franco Harris immaculate reception, the 50th anniversary and everything, talking about how important Franco was to the franchise. And that, like, he basically, like, changed the trajectory. Like, that era in the 70s changed the trajectory of what the Steelers are all about. Did your pap pass down any stories or just any tidbits 
of what it was like playing for the Steelers in the 50s? There's not one particular story that I can really come back and say that he told me when of his time at the Steelers, but the legacy that I do love and want my grandfather's legacy to live on was one that he gave love to the people, you know. He he showed his love and in that way I want to give back and I don't know, it's hard to say, but he was just such an inclusive man who wanted everyone to feel like they were part of the family, like we were like they were friends. So, mm. um, yeah, I live under his legacy and I always will. And I take that as an honor as well. So, no, absolutely, man. And hey, keep making them proud, baby. Keep making them proud. Let's go. Oh, I got a lot of people that are living. I got to make proud too. Hey, so. that too. Absolutely. Absolutely, <laughs> man. <laughs> I like, yeah. I like the context right there, man. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now, you did speak on earlier, man, just uh, talked about the defense kind of rallying around, you know, the decision to go with Kenny Pickett and stuff like that. But if you could just talk about what has impressed you the most with your time, you know, as Kenny's teammate, whether it's been him in practice, games, or how he conducts himself in the meetings, just whatever it is. But what has impressed you the most in terms of watching Kenny? Yeah, I loved how Kenny originally came in. He never opened his mouth and said he deserves to be a starter, he, but he came in and it worked. Mm, and he worked and he worked and he okay. worked. And that's the sort of things that gets you respect from your teammates. Mm -hmm. I mean, people love to see a young guy come in here and work. Similar story with Mark Robinson. Mm. I got major respect for him because he didn't open his mouth one time. He came in here and dedicated himself to get better every day. So as an older guy, you respect guys like that. So, Kenny came in doing that and then earned the ability to be able to lead his guys. And he stepped into that role with ease and with comfortability. So um, being a defensive player, I'm not intimate in those huddles, but it seems that he has control of the offense at a young age. So nah, respect. We're, we're excited for it. Now, you mentioned dudes that are hardworking. Uh, what about Jalen Warren? Because you, as linebackers, work kind of closely with the running backs. Did you have any inkling or was there a tell that Jalen Warren could have this type of role going back to like the off season? Uh, for sure. Um, I think I, a lot of people were able to identify early on in training camp that this kid was going to be a for force to reckon with. You know, being an undrafted kid, I feel like me and him have bonds in that way. I mean, um, I always try to – you know, see the undrafted guys that are going to end up making it, like James Pierre and mm, we have other guys. Yeah, like, mm, okay. Like, it's kind of like, uh, you know, everyone has their draft class, but that's our undrafted class. So. <laughs> respect. No, no, put some stamps <laughs> on it. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I got respect for those guys. And early on, he showed his ability and his want to and his determination to make plays. And he goes out there and does it on a consistent basis. No, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Now, we've um, talked to you kind of about, you know, the dynamic of the team and just kind of the mindset, but just also want to focus in on the inside linebacker room because it's awesome to see how all of you guys have been playing and playing significant snaps, man, whether it's Miles Jack, whether it's been Devin Bush, and then of lately even Mark Robinson. But if you could, just talk about what that dynamic is like for you guys. Do y'all look at that as like we're pushing each other? Is it a little bit of a, like a friendly rivalry going on? How does that play out for you guys on a day-to-day? -day? I think at the end of the day, we all wish we could be on the field at one time. Um, everyone's got that, you know, that killer mindset where they want to be the ones making the play. And I think Coach Flo has done a great job getting four guys ready to play. Yeah. So, um, I, I trust whoever I stand next to in that huddle because of the reps we've put in, because of the trust that we have through meetings and understanding. And at the end of the day, those those are my brothers. Those are the guys I spend most of my day with every day. Yeah. And uh, I love being able to get to work with them on and off the field, getting to know who they are as people. So, um, yeah, I love Devin, Miles, Mark. Deuce, Chico. Let's go. Tay, Kenan, Let's go. All those guys. Let's go. So, um, even the guys that are no longer part of this room, like UG yeah. and T Gray and others. So yeah. like I, I I got love for those guys and I know they support me as well. So they we all want to see each other winning essentially. Nah, that's really good to hear, man. And like you said, I had to ask because 
I've been a part of those groups where sometimes it is all love and other times it's a little bit more, you know, contentious and stuff like that, man. But that is awesome to hear, man, that yeah, there's a lot of mutual yeah. respect there in the rooms. No, absolutely, man. Definitely, definitely glad to hear that. Now, we know you got the big game coming up this weekend, man. Cleveland Browns. If you could, man, just talk a little bit about that matchup, man, the significance of it. And, you know, just how you're feeling, man, when you watch them on tape, certain things that you feel that they do really well for you or that you think they do well. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, studying them we, this week has been fun because it's our first time really getting to, to study Deshaun Watson. Yeah, We saw him here, I want to say, three years ago. And yeah. he was a special talent then, and yeah. he still is. So um, it, it's fun when you get to go up against guys like that um, at a quarterback position. But personal matchups, for me, I know Nick Chubb has got to be one of the top two, if not one, yeah. running back in the league. So... <laughs> Anytime you get that challenge as an inside linebacker, you know it's a game that you really got to step up. And we're expecting them to run the ball, try to get the ball to Njoku, who's a very versatile tight end, can catch the ball all over the field. Mm -hmm. He's like a small forward running out there. (laughs) So uh, we're going to have to stand up big in those matchups. And, you know, I, I think we got the guys to do it, and I think we got the schematics to do it. So it'll be fun. All these games are fun. Nah, let's go. Let's go. Now, I do have to ask you this, man, because, you know, it's contract year and all that stuff, and it's at the end of the season. You don't have to go all the way in depth, but just simply, if, you know, you were able to come back in Pittsburgh, man, would you be open to doing that, or would you want to open and, you know, and test the market and stuff like that once this contract ends? You know, I got one goal on my mind. <laughs> You, you know this. <laughs> like, you, but you have to ask it, I know. But at the end of the day, nothing matters but this we go. game that's standing right in front of us. Here we go. Like, that does not cross my mind. Like, I'm hoping we get to play for the next few weeks coming up. Yeah. And if the chips fall on the table the right way, we will be. So, yeah. that's that's all that's really to focus on right now. Respect. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I got a fan question here. We got yes, sir. this is from Shay Willie seven one seven. What is Robert Spillane's favorite beer? Mm. My favorite beer? Yeah. I try to stay away from beer. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't. Um, I am. I'm building a, a pretty bad beer gut over these last two or three years. I'm really not a big beer drinker. One thing I do enjoy after a game, you know, a hard-fought Sunday, you're kind of cool down, is a little bourbon Ooh, okay, on the rocks. Okay, okay. And then I pour a little Irish cream in there and a little chai tea latte. Oh, you fancy over there, man. Put, what? Put, put a little whipped cream <laughs> on top with some cinnamon spice. Hey, yo, uh, the what? Yeah. W- you got your uh, favorite house slippers too when you're drinking this drink, man. What, what, what we got going on over here, slippers. man? I got the ones <laughs> on, wrapped up in a blanket, watching the rest of the game. Like see. Hey, see, I put a little bit of this up there. I got a little cream, a little whipped cream on this thing right here too. Oh, so oh, you'll oh you'll watch God. all the games like on a Sunday? Pardon? You'll watch like all the games on Sunday when you're not I mean, playing? Not. Mm, yeah. It depends, but most of the time it's on the TV and I'm sitting down on the couch. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, <laughs> Mus, you didn't, right? Yeah, I wasn't ever a guy that really like, you didn't watched even watch it to the that extent. Bowl. Yeah. Mm. Like I said, everybody's different yeah, with it, usually, though, man. Usually, if it's a home game and it's an yeah. early game, I'll have family in town, so yeah. it'll, it'll be on the TV. Okay, I think we got the last question here, though. This, oh, this is the yeah. the last one for yes. you. This is, this is a big one. We've this been is, asking every guest this, this uh, season. I feel like, Spillane, this. I feel like this question started – Right after we talked, right around the time after we finished talking with you, man, Dotson ended up coming on the show and being a guest. And this is how okay. it started. So, so D, okay. get, get, go ahead. So no, he give, give him the backstory. Here Dawson we go, baby. tweeted it out. Mm-hmm. And we, yeah, yeah. So he said, I don't know if you even recall this. Last year, he said that he could defeat a cheetah in a one versus one match. Like one, Hand to hand combat. No weapons, no running, just mano y mano. I, I don't think. Dawson's lying. <laughs> uh, yeah, I kind of agreed with Dawson. I feel like Dawson could beat a cheetah. Do you think you could, though? Oh, hey now. Uh, 
in hand to hand combat. Yeah, yeah, no weapons or just anything. Cage match, like MMA, cage. Yeah. octagon, whatever. There's going to be one animal walking out of the ring, and that's going to be me. Oh. So I'm not letting a cheetah Ooh. take me down. You hear that right there? It's only one animal walking out of here, baby, and it's going to be Spillane, all right? It's going <laughs> to be that man. Let's go. Let's so, go, man. What's your I'm technique? Not, I'm not you, going you got a technique a or anything? <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'm going to let him get in, and I'm going to try to choke it out, like, full on. Just, all right, full on mm. MMA, just choke him out. We've heard that. We've heard the choke approach. We've heard the headlock. We've heard, didn't Like it, a sucker punch. Yeah, I think it was, <laughs> was it my legs? He was going to punch it and then just grab it and, like, choke it or something like that. Yeah. Okay, all right, okay, okay, okay. So, we know. I'm, I'm not saying, it's going to be a bloody mess. I mean, nobody <laughs> wants to see that, but, I mean, I'm sure somebody would want to see that, but not me, so. <laughs> I try to stay out of those confrontations. There, there we go. There we go. But I like the confidence, though. I like the confidence. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. But, you know, that's all we have for you today, man. We are grateful as heck, man, for you to come on the show with us again, man. And, yeah, man, just keep doing everything that you're doing both on and off the field, man. Big fans of you over here, man. Appreciate you, Arthur. Appreciate, appreciate you, D. Oh, appreciate it, bro. Have a good rest of your day. No doubt. You too, man. Peace. Peace. Peace.